The glycothyroid mechanism, as we all know, is responsible for the change in length of the vocal folds. That's how we change pitch. It's extremely important um, part of the mechanism, and we pay a lot of attention to the glycothyroid joint. And of course, we can assess um, statically what is the initial position of the glycothyroid joint. To do that, we have to identify the glycoid, we have to identify the thyroid, and the most important, we have to identify the distance where which is palpable anteriorly between the thyroid and the glycoid. Now, in that case, there are no external features that can lead us. Sometimes we have a nice crease over the gap between the glycoid and the thyroid, but here we don't see it. So how to find, first of all, the glycoid arch? Either we find it from below down, or we, we travel from, from the sternal notch all the way up. And, and the first prominence from below up, on the second prominence from above down, will be the glycoid. So, we feel the glycoid, and we move slightly up, and we should identify the gap, a slight gap between the glycoid and the thyroid. Now, now it takes a bit of practice and experience of where the initial position of the glycoid should be. Should it be completely closed, meaning there is no space between the hyoid and the thyroid, or should it be completely open, where we can detect a big space at rest? This is a question that is remaining unsolved. Once we detected the position of the glycothyroid gap, we will ask the client to do some movements in order to see whether there is a range of movement in the joint. So can you give me a nice low sigh? Huh. A bit lower, like a chest voice. Try again. And we should detect some opening because as we go down in pitch, of course the glycothyroid joint opens and that's how the vocal folds shorten. Now, keeping the fingers still in the gap, we will ask the patient to go into a chest voice again and immediately after into high pitch. So can you go huh. and immediately go into so huh. lovely. Of course the whole larynx rises, but we have to follow it and to check whether we detected some movement as we go high, the gap should close. So give me another yawn. And ee ee. And I detect a small movement. You can see that she, her habitual speech is slightly high, and that will go with a slightly closed glycothyroid joint. And that's how we examine that mechanism.